comes through the comments. Okay, I think it's recording yesterday. Yeah, cool. I'll hand it over to you, Joe. Great, thank you, Joanita. Um, so hello, everyone. I can't see everyone, but um, thank you for joining us and thank you for inviting me. I'm happy to chat with you today about our nonprofit board internship program. So a little bit of background, a little bit about where I'm coming from. So I work um, with several different experiential learning programs at the University of Alberta, one of them being community service learnings or CSL. So CSL typically works, is curricular, so it's tied to coursework. So students, as part of their academic courses, they um, do hands-on work in the nonprofit sector as part of their coursework. So applying theory and practice and getting hands-on um, real life experience. So one of the co-curricular programs that CSL offers, so things that are tied are not tied to classes, so outside of classes, is the nonprofit board internship program. So this program started in approximately 2006 um, as a response to community needs saying that, you know, they were really struggling getting youth on their boards. Um, <clears throat> so this program follows an experiential learning model, just as CSL does. So it's divided into three components. So the first one is that students, so in students from all across the University of Alberta campus in any faculty and in any degree level, so undergraduate, graduate and doctoral students can apply to this program. Um, so students who are admitted into the program attend monthly workshops uh, that are delivered by the board development program, which is run by the government of Alberta. So those topics uh, for workshops includes things like policy development, um, understanding financial literacy, um, board governance, um, building effective teams, uh, leadership. So there's a wide variety of different workshops that students attend on a monthly basis. The second piece of the program is that students are matched to a board of a nonprofit organization in the Edmonton community. So boards apply to this program just like students do. Uh, students have now applied. We, their application deadline is earlier than boards uh, because typically pre-COVID students would disappear over the summertime and do uh, summer activities. So the program itself doesn't actually start until September, but the application process for students has completed and is now uh, coming up to June 1st for, for boards. So boards apply to the program. Um, in the application process, you might say you'll give a bit of a history about your about your board uh, what kind of board are you when does your board meet and kind of what are you looking for in a student uh, those might match up they might they might not all of our students um, are great uh, and they as i said come from a wide variety of different different academic programs um, so that matching process will happen over the summertime but starting in september uh, students would start attending your board meetings Someone from your board is identified as a mentor and that can work in a variety of different ways. Sometimes just one mentor is, um, is assigned to a student. Sometimes multiple board members um, take turns being a mentor. Uh, it really depends. We leave that up to each individual board and what the students are comfortable with. Um, and the hope that that mentorship relationship happens organically. We do do um, some workshops. The kickoff workshop is with all mentors and all students as well. Uh, and we do provide some mentorship um, activities that we can you know, help you with to build that relationship over the course of eight months. So that's the second piece. So the first piece is the workshops. The second piece is the board meetings. So students might apply what they're learning in the workshops to your board meeting, or they might see that happen in, in a real life situation. So like, oh, we learned about um, financial literacy in the last workshop. Oh, I'm seeing now I can actually read what these financial statements are actually talking about. Um, the third piece, as Joanita mentioned at the beginning is that students will create a project for your board. Um, so of those three pieces, we estimate for students their time commitment is approximately 60 hours. So that's over the course of eight months. So a couple hours in workshops each month, a couple hours in board meetings each month. And then the project, the final piece is approximately a 20 hour project. 
So over the course um, of the program is an opportunity for the board to, to get to know the student and what kinds of skills and um, experience that the student can bring and what that project, how they could contribute to a project. And likewise, the student is getting to know both the mentor and the rest of the board and thinking about what are some things I could, I could bring to this board and how can I help them you know, achieve their goals. Sometimes the project, because it is just a 20 hour project, sometimes the student might create kind of what we say like the scaffolding of a project, maybe not the whole breadth of say like reevaluating your policy manual, but they might go through and weed out like maybe we should do this differently, maybe we should add this, here's a table of contents, here's some key points that I think you should add. They might be doing some research. So again, that 20 hours goes by pretty quickly. So it might take them a couple hours to do research on best, um, best practices for policy manuals, things like that. Um, so the project typically doesn't get started until I'd say December or January after you've gone through that period of getting to know one another. Um, and then typically the board or the project, excuse me, is presented at our graduation ceremony. And that's usually held at the beginning of April. So the student might present their project to you earlier or at a different, a different time, but their deliverable for the purposes of this program is, is April. So that's kind of the scope of, of the program. Uh, in September, we all meet, so all students and all boards meet together. And then for the rest of the time, students will just meet on their own. So they'll be attending workshops as a cohort, but uh, board members are not, do not participate in those workshops. In January, we do a midpoint check-in. So we check in with all mentors and we check in with all students just to see how things are going, uh, gather some feedback. And then in April is when we have our graduation ceremony all members, all participants are invited to that. So board members, mentors, uh, students, friends, things like that. Pre-COVID, we used to hold that event at City Hall. Um, hopefully, maybe we will hold that again come April 2020 at City Hall. It's usually a lovely event. But regardless, we did it online uh, this past April, and I think it was quite successful, and students were able to talk about their projects uh, in, in detail, and I think everyone was was really pleased with how with how things went. So that's kind of the general scope of the program. Uh, I will just put here in the, um, I don't think I need to share my screen necessarily, but I'll put it here in your chat. That is the web link for, to give you a little bit more detail about the program, but also that's where you'll find um, Yep, I can. Um, I'm just seeing Melissa's question there in the chat. Um, so that's where you'll find the application form. Also on that, um, on that page, just give me one second here. We have a workbook. Now I'm, I'm going to show you the workbook from this past year. Um, but in there, On page seven is a list of past projects, or sorry, it's page six. Um, but so for example, this past year, we had students do board profiles. So students um, interviewed uh, board members and created short profiles and added those to the website. We had students create uh, social media, social media, excuse me, um, strategic communications plan so like how to get your message out um, through through social media again as I referenced earlier as an example of going through policy manuals um, thinking about uh, strategic planning uh, documents so creating templates for those um, thinking about volunteer recruitment and retention so how do we how do we get volunteers either to the board or to our organization and retain them so the project itself should be of benefit mostly to the board and their via, I guess, also through the organization itself. But this is meant to be a board project. So something that the board can use as a tool to improve your effectiveness. Um, 
we walk through, we talk a lot about the project uh, in case people haven't come to a confirmed idea yet in January. Uh, so we'll walk through, you know, the, the mentor might have a few ideas, the students might have a few ideas and making connections about how we can make that work within a 20 hour time span. Um, so there's, there's no end of possibilities to what the project might look like. It might be something that the board has, you know, wanted to do, but never gotten around to for a long period of time or something the board maybe has started and not completed or maybe it's um, refreshing or reviewing and renewing documents or tools that already exist. Um, Jenny's question, can a board take more than one student in particular if they have a bigger project? Um, good question and actually very timely because interestingly, last year, uh, the 2020-2021 cohort was the largest we've ever seen in the history of the program, which was interesting to me because um, it was all online and it was during during the pandemic, but <clears throat> demonstrated to us that you know students really want to be engaged in community and maybe even more so um, because everyone is is stuck at home. So that was really encouraging. And again, this cohort we have also um, is about the same size as last year. So again, last year and this year have been the two largest. Uh, numbers of student applications, which is which is very encouraging, I think. And because of that, um, we had more students than we had boards. So we asked some boards if they were interested in accepting more than one student, um, and some of them were. So this was the first year that we had more than one student matched to a board. Typically, it's just one and one. But we did add that question actually to the application form for boards. So when you're filling it out, I believe it's one of the last questions because we just added it last year, is uh, how many, up to how many students would you be willing to, to host? And also in regards to the project, so we've had, um, we've had some boards who apply year after year after year and um, when they do that and if they are successful in that they might that project might be a continuation from year to year or or student to student so <clears throat> a student can maybe create or start a project one year and then the next year uh, if they receive a second student the student can build on that so it's kind of um, a great way to maybe build that full yeah larger project in case you know if, if it's something that isn't needed like immediately but something that yeah. you know can take a take a few years to develop. That's that's perfect. Yeah, that's what I was kind of wondering. I was just thinking two students working for 20 hours is quite a bit more impact if you wanted like a policy review, which is a great example mm -hmm. because it's probably one of the questions I get the most <clears throat> from community league boards is could we have help with our policy manual? Mm -hmm. But it's such an intimate process. Like I can't, there are generic policy manuals, but as you know, those aren't actually that helpful. Yeah. You really do need one that's specific to your board. So yeah, that's um, I'm seeing a question from Melissa. Could a possible project be a community engagement strategy? Absolutely. Um, definitely something that you could uh, work work through with with a student. Um, you can also put on your application if you know, and again, it might not always happen, like mat the matching process has multiple layers. you know how do we how do we match students to boards? Um, ideally, it's, you know, like a board is looking for this type of student or from this background or a student is looking for this type of board to get that experience, but sometimes they don't exactly match up. Um, but you can indicate like, I'm looking for a student who has, um, you know, either like maybe research experience or, um, you know, comes from, from one of my areas, which is community service learning. So it comes with a background of community engagement. Um, comes with an evaluation or a survey background, uh, you can indicate those things on the application. Um, I think EFCL could support by offering students a general community leagues 101 session. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'll yeah. speak quickly to that, but um, Colin and I had discussed that if you end up applying for this uh, program and then you get success when you get matched with a student, if you wanted some support from the EFCL, let us know and then we can make sure that your student gets like Community Leagues 101 
so they get a presentation from Jenny or myself about what community leagues are because uh, they are a little unique and the board system and everything is a little bit unique compared to like your standard nonprofit. Uh, but we can also give them access to our board training development program so they can see kind of what EFCL board members get in terms of training. Um, but they can also get, um, they'll also get access to our diversity and inclusion modules that will be up by that time too, if they're interested in learning about diversity and inclusion from that board lens within the community movement. So the EFCL is also there to support you because uh, we recognize you all are volunteers and it can be a lot to take on a student and a lot to train them as well, um, particularly not just about the board experience, but also just what is community leagues, especially if you're getting a student who's like an international student or someone who's it's their first time in Edmonton and they don't know anything about leagues. Um, so we just wanted to pitch that out there that if you need support with that we can help with that. That's a good point, uh, Jawanita, because um, as, as you provided the example of international students, so we definitely have international students apply, um, which I think is wonderful because these students are you know, really wanting to get the most out of the Edmonton experience while they're here, like instead of just like I am on campus or in my uh, dorm room and doing my thing. So that's a really, you know, they really want to get out uh, and find out what's happening in Edmonton, but they also might have like no familiarity at all about, you know, necessarily well, community leagues, um, but Edmonton itself as a community, um, not the nonprofit sector, what kinds of boards are out there. So there will be probably like a learning curve for students to get oriented. So that's awesome that there's support available for that. Um, just reading the questions here sounds really great. That's okay, <laughs> I'm nodding, it's fine, good. Uh, sense of time commitment for the board, how much mentoring time? Um, so as I mentioned in the guidebook, we do provide some mentoring activities that you can try or not. Uh, we really leave that relationship between the student and the mentor quite organic. So whatever works for, for both of you. Um, that said, what has worked in the past is sometimes mentor and student will meet maybe 30 minutes before a board meeting to maybe go over the agenda, get any kind of historical things that might help improve understanding of what's happening at the board meeting prior to, or they might meet 30 minutes after a board meeting to discuss you know, what, what occurred at the board meeting. So as far as time commitment, so that's kind of what we're looking at, like a little bit of time either before, a little bit of time after. We've also had mentors who've, again, pre-COVID, but, um, you know, if there are any online events, but getting this, inviting the student to other things outside of board meetings, if that's your preference, again, it is not a requirement, but say there's an event happening <clears throat> um, through your league and you think, wow, it might be really awesome if the student saw this event. So that's more on the organizational side. Um, but when students do that, we find that when they really immerse themselves and really get to know more from, about the organization and the board gets to know a little bit more about the student, that the relationship is just that much more enhanced. So like if there are other things like outside of board meetings that you think the student might benefit from, great. But if that's beyond your, your time commitment, that's also fine too. Really it's the checking in either before or after board meetings, checking in on the project, having those conversations and those discussions. Um, so the time commitment other than like your, cause you'll already be at your board meetings, um, would maybe be an extra hour, I would guesstimate. But again, that would depend on individual mentors. Some mentors put in more time, um, but I would say that would be kind of your base level. <coughs> Excuse me. Any other questions? This probably already goes to what you said, but like if um, some of our league boards have subcommittees, like regular nonprofit boards, I'm wondering like if could they invite a student to join slash like what is the total number of hours the student has? Obviously, we don't want to get them to go over if they're doing board meetings, workshops, and everything else. Sorry, that was yeah. like questions in one. <laughs> no, that's okay. Um, yeah, and some students are willing to to put in that extra time we 
we uh, tell students when they're applying to average 60 hours throughout the whole program. So that's 60 hours over the course of eight months. Um, so if they want to attend board meetings, you can certainly, or sorry, committee meetings, you can certainly invite them. And again, that just increases their understanding because some might not even be aware of, oh, there are committees on the board. I just thought there was a board and what do committees do? That's, that's great. Uh, again, the student may have time for that. The student may not have time for that. I guess one thing, and I should have prefaced maybe with this, is that these students are, this is a non-credit opportunity for students. Students do not get credit for this. Students participate in this program 100% voluntarily. Um, so these students are A, really interested in getting involved in their community, B, really interested in learning about board governance. So these students are not required to take this program. They're really doing it because they're genuinely curious and interested. And I think it's important to note though that it is voluntarily because obviously their coursework is their priority. So one thing that we hear sometimes at the check-ins with the mentors is like, oh, I, had, I had forgotten how busy students are. <laughs> these students are very busy. They are doing many things. Um, and then on top of this, they're doing this, this internship. So right at the very beginning, um, it's a good idea to set up a, you know, a communication plan with your, with your student. So how do you communicate? Do you communicate by email? Do you communicate by a text? How often do you wanna communicate? Should we set up monthly check-ins? You know, that kind of thing, just so that you're prepared and you can schedule and know all of those things instead of, I can't get a hold of my student. I don't know where they are. They're not responding. Um, so we, we encourage to, to start off with that kind of thing. Um, I wonder if there would be a benefit to partnering students to a community where they live, if possible. That's, that's possible. And so we, um, again, we don't really know what the fall will look like. And I don't know if, if you know what the fall will look like, but through the interviews that I've been doing this past few weeks with students, um, that has been a question for students about how will board meetings take place. Um, some of them may be eager to be in person, some of them may be not so eager to be in person. So, you know, hopefully being able to provide an option for students who maybe aren't comfortable attending in-person meetings right now, um, given, given COVID. But I, I like your point about it would make it would be great if if you know they were part of a league that was in the community that they lived in that might be harder to match up but um but it could be possible any other questions i have a quick question Jill. Sure. and you might have spoken to this right at the beginning but i was multitasking so just for a no, second no worries um, these are, they have to be U of A students, like someone can't be recommended to the program from external to the university, is that right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, it is a university program, um, so they do need to be registered University of Alberta student. Okay, perfect. And and then my follow-up question to that is, do you know, and maybe this is um, not in your purview, which is fine, do you know of any programs that are very similar to what you're doing, but maybe for other students, like in other universities, or is this a common program? There is um, a new program created by Volunteer Alberta just last year or the year before, actually by one of a nonprofit board internship alumni. So she had participated oh, in this program okay. yeah. and then was hired by Volunteer Alberta to create a program for youth. Mm -hmm. um, and it's called Youth at the Table. I don't yes, know. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I was trying. That's what I think that's when I was sort of. Yeah, but I couldn't remember what it called, and I was wondering how similar or dissimilar they were. Um, um, they're they're definitely similar because she did, um, and I she uh, did work in collaboration with myself. So we we um, met often uh, during her yeah. development phase. So it it models a lot of similar things to this program. I guess one larger thing is that it's not exclusively for University of Alberta students, and it's okay. province wide. Great. So Thanks. It's, um, yeah, it's all over Alberta. Okay. <clears throat> if you do have any questions uh, about anything, I'll put my 
we have two emails. Um, that is my, my direct email. And then there is just a nonprofit board internship email as well. So we have the June 1st deadline, but it's, it's fairly flexible. Um, if, you know, if you, you know, need to run this by the rest of your board before submitting an application, um, but you're planning on submitting an application, you could just email me and say, I just need to board approval, but I'm planning to apply. Um, so it might not get in there by June 1st, that's, that's okay. Um, <clears throat> just, just let me know. I, we, I don't generally close the application, you know, June 1st at um, five o'clock or anything like that. So, but just give me a heads up if, if you are needing any kind of extension. And yeah, if you have any questions as you're filling out the application or anything at all, please just feel welcome to, to send me a message. Oh, well, thank you so much, Jill. I know this, some leagues were asking us about this and I'm excited, hopefully, um, hopefully the folks here apply. And if you do need any support from the UCL, you can always contact us or if you need Jill's info, we can always send it out again. And yeah, you'll receive a follow-up email with with all of this in there too. Um, and so we look forward, hopefully, you know, have some leagues as part of this and then to hear how it goes. Yeah, yes, definitely follow up with us. Oh, sorry, Jill, I was just gonna say, no, no, no. we wanna know if people do it because then we can say, hey, a league did it and they really liked it. So um, maybe Jill for you too and the leagues that are here, if you do it, let us know at EFCL because then it helps us to promote it as like a useful thing for league boards. Mm -hmm. Leagues always wanna know, well, who did it? Did it work? <laughs> like, that's always <laughs> what we for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's very exciting. So please, please get in touch or please apply. And uh, thanks very much for having me, Jaunita. Um, yeah, if I can, uh, I can stay on for a little bit longer. Otherwise, thanks so much. Yeah. Thanks, Jill. It's always nice seeing you. <laughs> you too. It's been way too long. Yes. So when this is all over, we will all go for lunch. It'll be good. <laughs> oh, in person. <laughs> Does, um, I'm not sure if everyone has their audio for the other participants. I didn't hear from, okay. Well, hopefully people got their questions if they had them. I think so. <laughs> okay, team, I'm gonna head out. Nice to meet you, Jill. Nice to meet you too. Thank Bye. you everyone. I'll stop this.